from Kentucky and I'm so excited to be in the house. We're in the kitchen actually and I'm cooking dinner. We're making a cheddar ranch burger. I've made this one time before and it was so delicious that I put it straight to my blog. So the recipe is in this post along with all of the recipes in my blog that you guys are welcome to grab. They are free to all of my friends. Guys, how are you doing? If you are brand new to my page, my name is Amy and I live in Tennessee and I love to cook low carb keto meals. I love to teach you guys how to change daily habits and I love to inspire and to encourage you guys. So I'm cooking some chicken ranch burgers and we're gonna do this together. I'm almost done with the burgers. I'm gonna tell you what's in there and then I'm going to make the sauce. So the sauce is where it's all at, I'm so excited. So I have been um, eating keto. I started out very strict keto my very first couple of weeks and then I realized that was for the birds. Like I didn't need it for medical purposes. I just wanted to lose fat. I wanted to feel great. I wanted to be the best mom and the best wife I could. So I decided that I was going to change it up and do simple lifestyle keto, just simple keto. I call it flexible keto and I love it. And I've been doing it for five years now, five years. I moved from a size 12 to a size four, six, and I've maintained for four plus years and I feel awesome. So me and my family, we love to have fun together. We work together. We travel together. Like we do everything together. So I have a very tight family and I have a wonderful circle of friends. And I joined um, that circle of friends back in, I don't know, four, about four years ago. I don't know, I'm horrible at time. About four, four, four years ago, uh, I started sharing ketones because you guys know I love ketones. I drink ketones. I love to produce ketones. Like I love ketones. Um, and I just have an, an amazing circle of friends. So I can't wait to share a couple of things with you guys that I learned this weekend. But before I get started, I'd love to know if you're new here and you want getting started tips, put getting started in the comments, getting started. I would love to help you get some getting started tips so you can also change your lifestyle and have so much more energy, lose the fat you don't want, like be confident, like, oh, it's so awesome. I love helping people. So if you're new to my page, I'd love for you to say getting started in the comments so I can send you some getting started tips. And I'd also love to know where you're watching from. I'm so glad to be home back in my state of Tennessee. I've been in Kentucky the last couple of days, and it was awesome. It was so awesome, but I'm glad to be home. And um, so let's talk about the chicken burgers for a second. The chicken burgers are so easy. I mean, so easy. They look delicious. I've got three ready to go. Actually, they're ready for the sauce. They're not ready to go. They're ready for the sauce. And I got two more over here. So let me tell you how I made the chicken burgers. I just used a pound of ground chicken. You can get that at the grocery store. It's where I get it. Uh, just a pound of ground chicken. I used two tablespoons of ranch. Now you can use any kind of ranch you want, but I love this one. This is the Flavor Gods Ranch. It's just the Flavor Gods Ranch seasoning. There's no sugar. That's why I love this. So it's from Flavor Gods. You can use any ranch you like, guys. It's no problem. Use any ranch you like. But two tablespoons of ranch one pound of ground chicken, a cup of cheddar cheese, and a cup of bacon bits. Now, when I say bacon bits, I don't mean the bacon bits in the bag. Like, I cooked up some bacon, cut it up, um, I cooked some bacon and rippled it up in little, little bits, and we had a cup of bacon, a cup of cheddar, two tablespoons of ranch, and then I fried them up in some avocado oil. That easy, like that easy, so easy. So we've got our chicken burgers ready. Now we're gonna make our sauce. And if you guys want to hear a little bit about what I learned this weekend, you wanna hang tight. I'm so excited. Now I've got tons of notes. Like we're gonna be talking so much over the next month because I got enough knowledge that's gonna last me at least a couple of months of education over the weekend. So I can't wait to share that with you as time allows me to come on and, and just share a great conversation. And I do have a subject for you tonight. So give me just one second. Let me get this poured out. I've got a little grease pan outside. Oh, I'm going to do it already. Oh, I'm going to do it already. All right, we're going to do it already. That's what I'm going to do with it. Let me get a jar because we're going to get my grease thing away already. Where you, you got something? Here, I got a bowl. I'll just put it in a bowl right now. Now, I got to have my skillet. Wait a second. You talk. By the time you get done talking. <laughs> okay. All right. Ricky wants to do it now. He don't want to, he don't want to put it in a bowl. All right. It's a good that out for me. Thank you so much. I sure appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to off. It's too hot. Uh-uh. No, ma'am. 
Thank you. Ah, 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 ah. Look at that. Uh-uh. Makes me so mad. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Take on Frankie Sue. Y'all know how much I love Frankie Sue, and she just peed in my floor. Did y'all hear her bark? That was not her. That was Ella Mae because Ricky was putting a shirt on. She don't like to see people put their clothes on. <laughs> let, me, let me clean this up real fast. Frankie Sue, what is wrong with you, baby girl? I mean, that dog's pee is like a darn racehorse. I don't know how she has so much pee in her. So that means I can't just like edit out that piece. So <laughs> Ricky had to come get my grease and then I had to clean pee. That's how it is. This is my kitchen. This is Amy's house. <laughs> so guys, we are going to be making the ranch uh, sauce that's going to go on these ranch burgers. So this is a cheddar ranch burger. It's made with chicken. Now you can use ground chicken. You can use ground turkey. If you want to use ground beef, you probably could. But I love this just like it is. So just to remind you where we are so far, I've got a pound of chicken, ground chicken, Got at the grocery store. We used a cup of cheddar, a cup of bacon crumbles, two tablespoons of ranch. I'm using flavor guides. You can use any ranch you love. And then we fried that up in avocado oil. So I used about two to three tablespoons of avocado oil. Ricky just pulled, poured out the extra oil. Let me go ahead and start the next part. And then we're gonna have us a little chat. So the next part starts with butter. We're gonna use two tablespoons of butter. Oh, I gotta check on my broccoli. I got some broccoli in the oven. We're going to start with two tablespoons of butter, and we're going to do it on super low heat because it doesn't take long at all to cook this. <clears throat> Let me check out my broccoli. Oh, my broccoli is looking good. I got a little side of uh, roasted broccoli going on. All right, so we're going to now melt two tablespoons of butter, and then I've got a small onion just diced up over here, and we're going to cook up an onion. So that is the first step of the sauce. Guys, again, this recipe is so fast and easy, so supper's going to be done in just a minute. So guys, I wanted to give you just a little bit of information on one thing that I learned this weekend. And I've heard it before, but you know, sometimes it takes hearing something over and over and over before it actually clicks in your head. So I hope I don't bore you to death, but I want to tell you something I know I've talked to you about before, but this weekend it took on a whole new meaning. Like it was just, it just sparked. It just sparked. So I posted about it earlier, and that is honestly guys, I don't know if you realize how the human body works and our brain is so smart, so smart that we can actually make things happen that don't even happen. Like we can actually, I know this sounds crazy, but we can actually produce things in our head that either become reality or they never were there and we created them into our brains or something happened that was really bad but we make it so much worse by creating these stories in our brain. So honestly, this is so simple and I hope you don't think I'm crazy, but the bottom line is one thing I've learned this weekend is that we have to condition our brains and we can't live in the past, but more than that, we can't try to remember the details from our childhood. And we also need to just look in the present and speak kind words to ourselves. So I'm just cooking up some onion right now. I got a, a, a small onion, like a half of a small onion. It's not that much. Just chopped up really fine. I'm, I'm sauteing it in two tablespoons of butter. So this is the thing, guys. If you speak things into your brain, they become true. So you might have done something bad in your past. Like, I have done bad things. Like, I have done bad things. You have too because we're human, right? You've done bad things. And for me personally, I know my faith tells me that as soon as I bring it to God and ask for forgiveness, it's gone, right? The clean slate's there because that's how much he loves me. But the fact is, I can get that forgiveness, but it's still there, it still creeps, it still hurts your heart, it's still in your mind, but that's because we don't let it go. But more importantly, we just keep that playing, like we keep playing it. 
Like every time you start to feel good, it's like we sabotage ourselves from feeling good because of the bad we've done. So instead of talking about the bad things that are there, sometimes they're not even there. Like we feel like we're a bad mom, but in reality, we're not a bad mom. We're just a tired mom. We're a busy mom. We're a working mom. We're not a bad mom. But we tell ourselves in our mind that we're this bad mom or this bad person. This thing we've done in the past is still haunting us because we keep it there in our brains. And you might have seen I posted on my whiteboard here. Look, Gozi had a whiteboard this weekend. And I posted on there that I am magnificent. And guys, the thing is, we truly can condition our brains to feel good or to feel bad. And we can, I'm going to be teaching you a lot of things about this. A lot of things. But this is the first thing. Like we have to speak positive things to ourselves. We have to talk good to ourselves. We have to treat ourselves well. And one thing that we do often as a human race, especially as a mother, as a woman, I can speak on a woman's behalf, is we keep our past right here in the present. Like it's here. When we had a bad conversation with our husband, when we've done something we feel is unforgivable, even though the person has forgiven us, when we say a harsh word to someone and then we're like, oh, I didn't mean to say that or I didn't want to be that way. I didn't want to do that. Like I didn't want that to happen. You know, we, we keep that stuff right here in the front of our minds. We always, always go back to something we've done wrong or the, the feeling we have from that, that wrongdoing. But I'll tell you guys, we really need to be speaking kind to ourselves. And even though you may have done that, like I have done bad things, that's not who I am. Like I'm not that person. I'm not the thing I've done. I've done something. It's, it's done. It's over. I've asked for forgiveness from my Lord, from my spouse, from my friend, from my daughter, you know, whoever it is. We, we've talked with them. We've asked them to forgive us. Now we have to forgive ourselves. And we have to condition our brains to think highly of ourselves because all of that past that we've just kept right here in our, our heads and our hearts, and we've we played it over and over and over, so now it is a part of you. Like, you did something bad, but that is not who you are. So if you keep that in your mind, if you're always replaying, 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 then that becomes you. You don't want to be that person, right? You ask for forgiveness because you were sorry. Like, you don't want to relive that, but if you do, I promise you will become that person. So we need to condition our minds to love ourselves. We all know, always need to be talking highly of ourselves, which I've talked to you guys about the innate statement before my, or an I am statement where you actually write down the things that you are or want to be. And I've shared mine with you guys many of times. And, and I love my statement. I say it to myself every single day. But just one kind word to yourself makes a difference. And we need to do it daily, not just say, hey, Amy, I'm magnificent. Like, it needs to be every single day. I need to look in the mirrors deep in my eyes. Like, I'm looking, like, deep in my eyes. I need to look in my eyes and say, you are beautiful. You are brave. You are kind. You are magnificent. You are confident. You are loving. You are all of these things. Like, we need to at least say one kind thing to ourselves every single day because our brains are conditioned to, by what we tell ourselves. We can become anything we set our minds to. I'm not talking about physical I'm not talking about financial. I'm not talking about anything except who we want to be. We can become the person we want to be by speaking the things to our brain because that's how it works. Like we can create stories and we can tell ourselves stories to either create the past in today or remove the past and move forward. So that's one thing I've learned this week. I mean, it was an amazing week. All right, we're making cheddar burgers. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm preaching now. Let me get back to the, to the recipe, and I would love to know your thoughts on this. So any thoughts you have, please put them in the comments. If you're brand new to my page and you want getting started, put tips, put getting started in the comments. And guys, I just got notification. My battery's going dead. I think that means I need to cook and spend some time with my sweet husband. So now we are making our sauce. We've got two tablespoons of butter. I just sauteed half of a small onion, and now we're adding one cup of heavy cream and a fourth cup of low carb, uh, low carb barbecue sauce. Now, if you're not low carb, throw in a barbecue sauce, but I'm using low carb barbecue sauce because I eat a flexible keto. So I'm using G Hu's original barbecue sauce. You can use whatever you want. Can you even see this guys? Can y'all see my skillet here? So we're making the sauce now. Guys, the sauce is heavenly. And this is a cheddar bacon burger. And what we did is we took one pound of ground chicken and I got that from the grocery store. You can get in the chicken aisle. It's ground chicken. One pound of ground chicken with a cup of cheddar, a cup of bacon crumbles, two tablespoons of ranch. So any kind of ranch seasoning powder you make, you buy, whatever you love. I'm using Flavor Gods. And then we just fried those burgers up in avocado oil. 
And now we're making the sauce, guys. This is so yummy. I'm telling you, my husband loves it. I love it. We only did it one time, and I put it straight to my recipe blog because I loved it. So we've got uh, two tablespoons of butter, sauteed a half of a chopped onion, and then we added, uh, after those onions were cooked, we added a cup of heavy cream and a fourth cup of low-carb barbecue sauce. I'm actually using G. Hughes. G. Hughes barbecue sauce is what I'm using. So we're going to let this simmer a second because we want the sauce to thicken, and then we're going to put those cheddar burgers right in the sauce and serve it hot. It's so yummy. Let me check on my broccoli real quick, see if it's almost done. I know it is because I can smell it. It smells wonderful. Your daddy put y'all back in the house? Your daddy be mean? So look at this broccoli. This is just the way we like it. It's perfectly browned. Oh, we love it. The broccoli is just a roasted broccoli. We put it on a baking sheet with some avocado oil, salt, and pepper. That's it. It's delicious. The easiest side dish ever is a roasted vegetable. And you can do it with pretty much every vegetable. But we're doing broccoli tonight. So it's done. I can tell by looking at it. I'm going to stick back in there so it doesn't get cold. It does get cold fast for sure. <clears throat> All right, let me check out your comments while my sauce is uh, simmering over here. Now, the sauce does get thick because you just put a cup of heavy cream in here. So, you can do it as thick as you want. If you want to simmer it just for a couple of minutes and throw your chicken in there and be done, or you can make a really thick sauce, completely up to you. If it gets too thick, you can add in some chicken broth. You can add in a couple of tablespoons of water or even more heavy cream if you want to. So, let me check out your comments. Guys, I had a great time. We learned so much. I had so much fun just catching up with my friends. It's amazing to be a part of this community, this community of provers. We call ourselves provers with the company Prove It. And it's just amazing to be a part of something so much bigger than myself. And being a part of a community that really wants me to be my best. Like, who doesn't want that? Like, who doesn't want somebody to really care deeply about you? And this company really does that. So I love, love, love. Um, let's see. I see you, Jacqueline. I will send you some getting started tips. Hey, Gina. I have been wonderful, girlfriend. All right, y'all hear the simmering? Starting to simmer. It's going to be delicious. Karen said the chicken burgers look good. I love it, and it's my favorite of yours. Yay, Janet. That's so excited. Um, let's see. Now I know what I do with that pound of frozen chicken. Yes, Glenda. It's so good. Let's see. Um, speak it into existence. That's right, Ruth. Positive affirmations. Absolutely. Candy. We girl, no, we grilled out today steaks and made green beans with chicken stock and salt and pepper garlic powder. Yum. Sounds good. God always forgives. Yes, it is. The hardest part is always forgiving ourselves, Ruth. Always. I finally caught you live. Yay, Becky, how are you? I'm so excited that you guys are here. Hey, Gina, how are you? Do you ever eat salad? Yes, Margaret. I actually ate salads the whole time I was gone because we were on the run. Like, on the run the whole time. Um... Oh, hey, Barbara, I'm so glad you felt that, and maybe this was for you. I need to hear this too, Beth said. Completely agree. I'm just looking to see if you guys have any comments or anything you want to add to that. I really needed to hear this today. Hey, Missy, how are you? Oh, Lee can almost smell it. Guys, it smells delicious. It's really good. So it's starting to thicken up because this does not take long to thicken. So I turned it down to a lower simmer. Um, you're so welcome, Gail. Uh... Oh, I don't know what's going on, Sandra. You know Facebook's sometimes kind of crazy, but the good thing is you can just watch it over. So as soon as I finish, you can just watch the video all over. The recipe, Ruth, is in this post, and it's so yummy. And honestly, it's so easy. It's, it's easy to remember, but I love my recipe blog because even me with easy recipes, sometimes I can get them confused. So this is so easy, but it is in the recipe blog, and that is in this post. So guys, I hope you took something positive from that. There was such an amazing, amazing, amazing um, such awesome training this weekend uh, from Joseph McClendon III. Joseph McClendon III is the spunkiest 70 year old I've ever met in my life. I mean, he is fit and he loves himself, which all of us should. And he was just hysterical. He had me cracking up the entire time. Does have a little, does have a little bit of language that I didn't absolutely love, but his presentation really struck a nerve. Like I've heard these things over and over and over. And even though I put some of it into practice, just the understanding of the physiology of how this works and our affirmations or, you know, horrid things we say to ourselves are, are really, really control our future. Um, you know, if you want more then you have to become more, there's no way that you can have more if you stay in the past. It's just impossible. Like you can't be, you can't smile and cry at the same time. 
You can't smile and frown at the same time. Like, it's absolutely impossible. So we have to have those kind words to ourselves, speaking things that are actually true. You are beautiful. You are kind. And I love that in the book, in the movie, The Help, the book, The Help. I love that. You're so pretty, kind. I can't remember all the three things. But it's true. Like, we have to speak those things to ourselves so that we can move past those past traumas or just the, the past thoughts of ourselves or the current thought of yourself. It's okay. We are human. We make mistakes, but that doesn't mean that we are our mistakes. So speak those positive words to yourself every single time, every single day. Always do it. Get you a whiteboard if you need to. Write across your mirror if you need to, or just say it. Just stand in front of the mirror, and that's the hardest thing. Have you ever done that? Have you ever really done that? I've done that. Like, I try to say my innate statement every single morning, most of the time in the car. But if I am standing in front of my mirror because I just brush my teeth, and I look at myself in the mirror, like, and I, like, lock eyes with myself, I mean, it's really hard. Have y'all done that before? I mean, like, I challenge you to do that if you haven't done that before, to lock eyes with yourself in that mirror and then say something positive or kind. Like, it's really hard. I've done it and just literally cried just staring at myself. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, all right, guys. I am really almost done with this. It is thickening up. I'm going to go ahead and put my chicken back in here. We're going to serve it up hot. My husband is back in the back room. I'm fixing to yell at him and I'm fixing to ring the dinner bell. Which is, dinner's ready! <laughs> Not like the old-timey dinner bell, but I'm fixing to holler at him, and he's going to come in here, and we're going to eat together, and we're going to have some great conversation. But guys, if you need me, you just reach out to me. I love this community. I get to work with you. I love to help you guys. So make sure you reach out to me if you need any help at all. Um, and I will talk to all of you guys later. Bye!